molecular fusion science and engineering. I'm Katerina, and today it's my pleasure to introduce you to an alumni of Fusionity Master Program, Andrei Goraev, who will be talking uh, about Thomas device. Andrei is doing his PhD in the Laboratory of Plasma Physics in Royal Military Academy in Belgium, in Brussels, and uh, he's also in collaboration with the Department of Applied Physics in Ghent University uh, in Belgium. So I'm looking forward uh, to hear about uh, Andre's topic. And uh, before we start, I would like to remind you that the webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on YouTube channel later on. And after the talk, we will have question and answer session. So you will be able to ask Andre about his topic uh, but just in case, if you have to leave earlier, feel free to use the chat to leave your question and I will ask it for you and you will be able to watch the reply uh, on YouTube in the recording. So without further delay, I give the floor to Andre. Um, thank you, Katerina. So hello, everyone. So today I would like to introduce our small fusion device called Thomas. And particularly, I want to emphasize that it can be a good start of your fusion career or the training playground. And we are also looking for collaborations. So maybe after this talk, you will find that the device is interesting for you and you can use it um, in collaboration with us for your own um, interesting ideas and some, something else, if you have it in mind. Okay, and then I would like to start. So first of all, I would like to say about Thomas. So Thomas stands for, uh, for the toroidal magnetized system. This is a small uh, fusion device located in Forschung Zentrum in Jurich in Germany. So the device uh, has been recently upgraded and now it's operated in collaboration with Forschung Centrum Jülich, uh, Laboratory of Plasma Physics uh, of Royal Military Academy in Belgium, uh, KTH in Stockholm, and uh, KIPT in Kharkiv, Ukraine. So originally the device was built in um, uh, Kurchatov Institute uh, around 1990. So in order to study war condition and then it was delivered to Forschung Centrum Jülich. And uh, so the device there started its operation. So after the recent upgrade, uh, the machine was prepared, has been prepared for uh, wall conditioning in plasma production and plasma surface interaction studies. Uh, this is the main purpose of this device. However, we are, very, uh, we're, we are really flexible in order to study anything related to fusion. So if people have some ideas and uh, so, and if they want to, if they want to test something, so related to fusion activities, uh, we are really open for it. So device can provide a, a high flexibility in operation. So we can organize the broad uh, range of experimental condition, and so we have some only small time and experimental limits. So we are very flexible. So about the limits and conditions, I will, uh, I will talk a little bit later. And moreover, so we use this device as a training playground for students and young researchers. So it's a very good tool and it's a very good place where you can obtain some necessary skills uh, in engineering and experimental physics. So it can be very useful for your future career in experimental physics or like uh, in some of the engineering fields. So today I will talk about a Thomas device. I will show you an overview and some systems. Uh, I will um, I will introduce uh, some systems of plasma production and I will describe the diagnostics which we use. So and later on um, I will talk about recent activities within them or within some kind of collaborations and working packages of Eurofusion, which we are working on. And uh, I also will share some ideas uh, about uh, further operation of this device. 
So let's start. Um, so as I said, so the Thomas is a fusion device. So it has the major radius of 78 uh, centimeters, while its main radius is 26 centimeters. Uh, the volume of the vacuum vessel is 1.2 meters square. And uh, the wall of the vacuum vessel are fully made of stainless steel. Um, the device has the magnetic field system, so it consists only with uh, of only um, of the toroidal uh, magnetic field coil. So we have sixteen magnetic field coils uh, made of uh, made of copper. So the maximum uh, the maximum toroidal field which we can reach in axis is uh, one hundred twenty five millitesla. So it can be achieved by driving the. Uh, current up to 2.2 uh, kiloamp. So you can see the, uh, the basics of the device in the picture. So the vacuum vessel, as I said, made of stainless steel and those uh, blue rings are um, the magnet magnetic field coil. So uh, the vessel and the magnetic field system are very simple in this case. Uh, a little bit uh, more details about the magnetic field of Thomas. So uh, we can uh, we can increase the magnetic field by increasing the current uh, in the magnetic field coils. So and we can also calculate the magnetic fields in every location and in then inside the uh, the plasma vessel. So the magnetic field on Thomas is very well described. So for example, and um, the upper picture, you can see uh, the change of the magnetic field with the radial position at the certain currents in, in the coils. So we, yeah, I, can, I, I, also put, I also put some um, modeling of the magnetic field. So in the toroidal and poloidal cross section, then you can have an idea uh, how it looks like in our device. So I would like to repeat that we all have only the toroidal magnetic field. Uh, however, um, depends on the uh, on the further ideas and further plans so probably the magnetic field will be modified we can have more complex magnetic fields in the future so um, the device uh, has been upgraded recently and we installed a lot of uh, diagnostics and some um, uh, some plasma production system, some auxiliary system was installed. So here you can see the 3D model of the device and how it looks like with all the components which were installed recently, like last uh, last four years. So since 2016, well, here we have a 3 plasma production system, a um, few diagnostics and also some auxiliary systems to um, maintain the vacuum and to diagnose the, um, uh, the, the whole system. Uh, yes, I will describe all the systems step by step. So I will start with the auxiliary systems. So the first auxiliary system is of course the vacuum system. So in order to provide a good vacuum, so we can have base pressure down to 5, 10 to minus 8 millibar. Uh, we're using a uh, big, uh, big turbo pump who connected to the series with a rotary pump, which is working quite effective and we have a good vacuum system. Also, we have a gas injection system. So uh, the gas injection system consists of two parts. The main gas injection system allows to inject uh, hydrogen, helium and argon simultaneously and can be done so the, the, the flow control can be uh, up to 400 standard cubic centimeters per minute. Additionally, we have uh, um, a small gas injection system. So for local gas injection, uh, it consists of two mass flow controllers here. So we use this um, auxiliary gas injection system to study um, uh, glow discharge and some application of glow discharge, but I can talk about it later. And of course, we have pressure monitoring. So we have different uh, 
different pressure gauges installed in the different location of the device. So we control the pressure in, in a wide range. Um, so you, you, you can see, you can see on the slide, which kind of uh, pressure gauges uh, we usually use. Uh, of course, we have some space to upgrade if we need something particular in this case. So another important point there is that we have a control system or well, the control system is the system which is uh, used to control all the system integrated together. So it's easy to maintain, operate and control different parameters of, uh, of the device. So the system is, as this, the system is based on the um, uh, Siemens Semantic S7 controller. Then uh, we also have a data acquisition system, which allows us to record the data from the different diagnostics, pending gauges and um, other equipment in order to um, record, to store, and then to use those data in order to um, easily analyze the results of experiments and for, to, to monitor how the different parameters evolved during some experiments and so on. So the, ne the next block is um, about plasma production system. On Thomas, uh, we have three, uh, three, three plasma production systems. So the first one is glow discharge system. We also have electron cyclotron resonance heating system and the ion cyclotron range of frequency system. So why do we need glow discharge? So um, I already, I already said that uh, we are interested in wall conditioning and the device was built mainly to study wall conditioning. So glow discharge cleaning is the most common wall conditioning technique and it's applied in a large number of fusion devices. So for us, it makes sense to have such a system. That's what we did. We installed, we installed a glow discharge system, which is similar to system of W7X and the system of FASDX upgrade. And it's based on the prototype W7X uh, glow discharge anode. So you can see how the anode looks like. It's exactly what is used on W7X and ASDX here. So it's made of uh, graphite and has a diameter of 150 millimeters. So uh, the power supply of glow discharge system can deliver up to 1.5 kilowatt and six sum. So you can vary the parameter of uh, glow discharge. So you can vary the current densities, um, depends on the application. And um, I also mentioned here the operating pressures, for example, for hydrogen and for helium as well, just to have an idea what pressure we can operate uh, a glow discharge experiment. So everything is shown on, um, on, this, um, on this model from the right side. So you can check it if you want. I don't want to really go deep into detail. I just want to say that uh, um, the, uh, the anode is connected to uh, one of the feed through on the top of the uh, vacuum vessel. And then the feed through is directly connected to the power supply. Those additional elements are for the particular experiments. So for example, as I said, that we have, uh, we have an additional gas injection system. So we study how the local gas injection influence the glow discharge and the glow discharge breakdown, for example. So the next is uh, electron cyclotron resonance heating system. Um, this is a system of plasma heating. Uh, it's also, so as you know, it's commonly used in the a uh, huge amount of fusion devices. In our case, uh, the system is based on the magnetron generating 2.5 gigahertz up to six kilowatt of power. Uh, we can operate the magnetron in the steady state and pass regimes. So we can go to, um, we can go down to one second of pass length. So it makes sense if you study different plasma applications. Um, so the, uh, the magnetron is connected via the standard uh, waveguide. It's called the WR340. So it has a certain dimension, uh, dimensions for the, to deliver, uh, to deliver um, a microwave with 2.45 gigahertz. Yeah. Um, 
So um, the system uh, the system can uh, can assist uh, plasma heating. So if we um, if we run only electron cyclotron resonance heating system, so we can achieve the densities uh, up to three, 10 to 17 for hydrogen and almost seven, 10 to 17 for, uh, for helium. And uh, the temperature is around uh, 20, 23, 25 for hydrogen. Uh, and uh, up to 15 electron volt for helium. Yeah, so as I said, the magnetron is connected via, uh, via a number of elements, which allows us to, um, which allows us to tune the microwave power. So um, yeah, we can talk later about, uh, about the those elements and how it was uh, well how it was constructed so i don't think it's really necessary right now to go deep into details to this i just wanted to show that we have this uh the system and what are the parameters of the plasma created by this system and heated by this system Another system which we have is uh, ion uh, cyclotron range of frequency system so a system which we can use to heat ions and uh, create uh, IC plasma. So the system is based on the single uh, single strap antenna, so which is designed to be uh, working in the range of uh, frequency of 10 to 50 megahertz, and we can drive, uh, we can run it up to six kilowatt of power. At of course, right uh, right now it's 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 not possible, so we are opting for six kilowatts. However, um, however, two kilowatt of power is uh, is easily achieved. So uh, this antenna is three D printed. So it's three D printed in Inconel. You can see uh, the original design of the antenna in the picture A below, and uh, how the antenna looks like after it was uh, printed and also covered by the layer of copper in order to um, improve the surface structure after the print in Inconel. Uh, the whole system is operated uh, on the past regime. So far we could achieve uh, uh, the discharge lengths of four seconds. And um, yeah, um, the densities, the electron densities, we, which we can achieve using the system is up to 5, 10 to 17. Uh, and the, tem uh, the temperatures is uh, almost up to 200 electron volts. And it's only uh, when we use up to 2 kilowatt of power. So with the uh, next upgrade, I think the, uh, the values of densities and temperature will be much, much higher in this case. Yeah, uh, the whole system is designed um, to, to, be, to be operated in the high cyclotron harmonics regime. So it's uh, uh, the typical, typical frequencies of tense, uh, tense harmonic of um, hydro, for, for hydrogen ion. So uh, the whole system you can see uh, you can see on the picture. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't put uh, the schematics, so we have two matching boxes. So this uh, the matching scheme which we use for antenna. It's the classical. We use uh, three capacitors um, to 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 tune this to tune the system. So if you have uh, questions about it, you can ask me. Or you can ask me later, so I can provide some information how uh, how the system is matched. As I said, we uh, in order to in order to study all these uh, plasma events, uh, conduct experiments, and monitor the system, we installed a number of diagnostics. So, and one of them there are uh, Langmuir probes, uh, specially made neutral particle analyzer, which uses time of flight um, principle. 
We also have residual gas analyzer and some video diagnostics to monitor and record the plasma events. I will start with, uh, with the Langmuir probe. So we have two Langmuir probes, which we use in order to uh, measure uh, electron density and temperature, plasma and floating potential. And we can also um, record uh, the radial distribution in the equatorial plane of those parameters of plasma. So the first probe is a single probe, which is commercially manufactured. Here you can see it also in the picture. I don't know how it's visible, but I hope you can distinguish between those two probes. So they, um, they are installed, so the distance between them is almost 14, 14 centimeters. But um, so the idea of use two probes in order um, is to cross check the parameters which we measure to be more sure and more precise in the measurement of the plasma parameters distribution. So the single probe, which is commercially made, so we used the, uh, the system which was available in the market, we just install it. So the probe has uh, tungsten tip. Um, it's, uh, it's kind of, um, it has a kind of cylindrical shape with the height of 1.4 millimeters and the diameter of 1.5 millimeters. So um, the probe has a voltage sweep, which is typical for the single probe. It's uh, from minus 150 to 150 volts. Uh, so the system of the single probe also have um, a radio frequency and DC compensation schemes, so which uh, allow, allows us to make some correction when you um, when you measure the plasma parameters for a different type of plasma. So for example, for glow discharge plasma, it's very useful to use the DC compensation or for example, for plasma, which is driven by IC reach, uh, yeah, radio frequency compensation is, is needed to obtain right parameters. Uh, we, also, uh, we also install the, the triple probe uh, and the benefit um, and the advantage of the triple probe is that we can determine instantaneous plasma parameters. So we don't we don't need to use any sweeps. We just um, measure directly uh, the plasma parameters, which I mentioned. So but in this case, it's very useful, and we can uh, study some fast plasma events with this type of probe. So. Uh, the probe was, uh, was built in collaboration with our Ukrainian colleagues. Um, it's, uh, it has uh, three tungsten tips, which is located equidistantly, uh, 3.5 millimeters between, between each tip, each pair of tip. And it also has cylindrical, cylindrical shape was the height of four millimeters and the diameter of 0 0.8 meters. So, uh, those probes are located closely to our um, ICRH antenna. And that's also beneficial to study some plasma production in the vicinity of some other events in the vicinity of the ICRH antenna. So uh, the next diagnostics, which uh, the, the, the next diagnostic which I want to talk about is residual gas analyzer. So we needed to know that you study the gas content in detail. So very useful diagnostic uh, for wall conditioning uh, studies um, that really helps to evaluate the efficiency of wall conditioning procedures. So um, the residual gas analyzer is, um, is based on the quadrupole mass spectrometer made by Pfeiffer. So its operational range is from um, one to 200 uh, uh, units, so it means that this is the ratio of mass and charge in this case. So, which is uh, for our device, which is quite enough. And the, um, the mass spectrometer has some features like uh, analog and multi-ion detection. So you can make a scan of uh, the residual gas in this operational range. So. And you can also select some certain buses and follow uh, the changes in the um, changes of the amount of this uh, these elements which you selected in order to understand uh, 
the differences, for example, before and after a plasma discharge, or for example, during the long plasma operation. Yeah, so um, the, uh, the, mass, uh, the mass spectrometer is installed in, um, in a separate chamber and it's separated from the, from the main vacuum vessel uh, in order to maintain a certain level of pressure because uh, we have uh, operating pressure range, so we cannot go above 10 to minus 5 millibar. Now for this, we also have a differential pumping and we can control with the uh, valve between the uh, residual gas analyzer section and the main vessel, so we can we can control the uh, the particle flow, which can also help us to adjust the diagnostics for special type of uh, plasma experiment. Um, another diagnostics is um, is time of flight neutral particle analyzer. So we use it to, de to determine neutral fluxes and the energy spectra of these neutral fluxes, uh, which is in particular interest of uh, IC plasma studies. So this uh, neutral particle analyzer was uh, uh, previously installed in extract machine in KTH Sweden, then it traveled to Forschung Centrum Jülich, and now we are using it as collaboration in, in collaboration with our Swedish colleagues. So um, the energy range for the neutrals, which we can record, is up from 10 to 1,000 electron volts, and the time resolution down to 150 millisecond. So um, the diagnostic is quite big, as you can see. Uh, so. Uh, the NPA consists of uh, the chopper tower, the chopper which can separate the particle flux in order to operate it in, um, in the pass regime. Um, we also have the flight pass, so the flight pass is required in order to um, have a energy energy separation. And in the end, from the right side, we have a detector tower. So and the detector in use is. Uh, is made by Hamamatsu uh, with the inactive sensor area of uh, 10 and uh, 12 millimeters. Mm, yeah, I think th that's 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 all about it. And we can move to the last point. So, so video diagnostics. So. Uh, the video diagnostic is really simple. So first of all, we use it in order just to check what is going on inside the vacuum vessel. Uh, we can also uh, record some events and check whether we have some uh, bad things like arcing and stuff like this. So uh, the diagnostic is very simple. We are using three USB cameras, simply um, web cameras just attached to some windows uh, so and you can see here where it is located so um, one camera is uh, uh, is for horizontal view another one is for vertical view and another one for for the for the tangential view um, so we also have another for the, the force camera, which is a special one based on the uh, Arducam made for Raspberry Pi. So the camera is installed in, the, in front of the ICRH antenna and the purpose of it is to uh, study the IC, IC breakdown and the events uh, happening close to, close to the ICRH antenna. Uh, another another great achievement of our device. So we started to study plasma surface interaction, also for wall conditioning. So we built uh, the load lock system uh, to expose some uh, material samples to a wide variety of plasma, which we can create with plasma production system. Um, so you can see uh, you can see the whole system on the on this picture here. So it's consists mainly on the so-called sample chamber where we can uh, 
exchange our samples, not breaking the main vacuum. And uh, also there is a manipulator which delivers, uh, which delivers the samples installed in the sample holder. It's number one in the picture. Uh, inside inside the plasma vessel. Uh, so the um, the surface orientation uh, according to, uh, to the magnetic field is very flexible so we can move uh, the samples vertically uh, and then we can also rotate uh, um, the samples and 300 degrees of uh, of freedom with the uh, quite high accuracy, and uh, in the vertical uh, in the vertical plane, the samples can be tilted at the angles of 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees. So that was respect to the vertical plane. Mm, so, some more details about the sample holder. So we decided to use the same design, like uh, a neighboring linear plasma device PSI two which is located at the same torus hole as, um, as Thomas device. So it's quite easy that we can um, use the same samples and the same components to study uh, plasma surface interaction on both devices on Thomas and in linear device PSI2. Of course, there are a lot of um, different geometries of sample. And I think we choose the most usable one. So. Uh, the typical sample has the uh, the probe surfaces uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 by 10 millimeters. And uh, so the probes are located in the circle. So eight probes and the circle diameter of 50 millimeters here. So uh, the sample holder is also designed to be actively heated. We use special heating plates in order to increase the surface temperature of the samples in order to mimic some um, special conditions and different uh, different fusion devices so so far we could achieve the temperature of 600 degrees celsius so the in this case the system is quite flexible so now i would like to say a few words about the working area of thomas so currently we are participating in a few projects so the um, some uh, some some of the projects are covered by Eurofusion activities. So, for example, um, we are aiming to study uh, ion cyclotron wall condition in hydrogen. It's covered by uh, one of the working packages of Eurofusion. So another collaboration is with uh, uh, Wendelstein Seven X. We are planning to actively use the um, sample load log system and expose some uh, carbon samples coated by boron and study its erosion. This is the purpose to support uh, the studies of boronization on W7X. So I, I also mentioned that uh, our glow discharge system and based on the similar components as the system of W7X. So we are aiming to study uh, some damages which is made while using um, uh, glow discharge cleaning in order to understand uh, better the, the side and negative effects of glow discharge for W7X, for example. So our new, our new idea is to, um, to study um, ECRH plasma for JT6 TSA. So our colleagues are using some codes and we need the studies on Thomas in order to benchmark those codes. In the end, we also study uh, some absorption of uh, ECRH at fundamental and second harmonic as a function of polarization. So, but I will talk a little bit uh, a little bit later about it. And um, another, I think, very important uh, task to collaborate with ITER organization. So they are quite interested in of using um, ion cyclotron wall conditioning cleaning in hydrogen and study how it will affect uh, some 
some plasma facing components in it. So we are doing some uh, sample exposure. So the samples made on tungsten and loaded by the ethereum. And we want to check uh, the isotope exchange during the exposure. And now, and the last, the last point which I want to mention here is uh, we have an idea to study the vacuum recovery at low pumping speed. So um, at the first steps of ITER, um, the pumps which are going to be installed in ITER, not all the pumps will, will work. So and, and it means that uh, the pumping speed will, will be very low. So with our flexible device, we can see how we can accelerate uh, the pumping and the outgassing um, with low pumping speed. So by using, for example, some, some types of plasmas. So of course the work is not finished and we, we foreseen the further upgrades. And uh, this is the point where, where I want to say that here we are really open for collaboration, inviting new students, uh, getting new ideas and joining us in order to obtain some experience. So uh, the first point is we want to upgrade our plasma production system further. So for example, as I mentioned, in order to collaborate with JT60 and study um, ECRH absorption, we would like to install and test the microwave polarizer and uh, study the plasma properties uh, with the different microwave polarization. IC, uh, ICRF system will be upgraded. So we would like to go to the full power from two to six kilowatts. And for this purpose, we would like to implement the matching algorithm, which was uh, developed uh, in our lab, Laboratory of Plasma Physics in Brussels. So, and, uh, so it should be implemented to make an automatic tuning of the system. We are also aiming to install some new diagnostics in order to understand what is going on uh, in case of plasma experiments. So in order to understand it better, uh, the first point is uh, a second triple probe, um, but it will be installed in the vertical uh, and the vertical port to have a vertical scan of plasma parameters. Right now we have only horizontal one. Uh, then we have no, we, we are aiming to have kind of 2D map of parameters. Um, another interesting option is to use a retardant field analyzer, probably first uh, in the vicinity of ICRF antenna in order to complement the studies made by neutral particle analyzer. Um, so this opens another room to play. Another, another diagnostic which are really interesting for us is uh, microwave interferometer. So we can have the line integrated density measurements and we can combine those density measurements with uh, measurements of our lander probes. Some colleagues from Forschung Centrum are advising us to use spectroscopy in order first to determine the ion temperature and some plasma content. And if we want to study a plasma wall interaction, it will be also useful to, to use spectroscopy for this purpose. And the last point, so we are looking for, for new ideas. And this is the point for collaboration, for example. So if you have any particular diagnostic which you want to test and our parameters are suitable for you, please contact us and we can discuss what can we do to make uh, to make this collaboration. So if you have any further question either related to, uh, to technical details or related to probable collaboration or related to, for example, if you're looking for master thesis, for master thesis topic, or even if you're looking for PhD or any other idea which you want to implement on our device, if you find it suitable to use our device. So you are very welcome to contact us. Here you can see uh, email addresses. Um, so the first one is mine. 
And the second one is uh, the email address of my boss. So we are very open. Please contact us if you have any questions, ideas, and so on. Yes, I think that was all what I wanted to say. I hope it was not too long. And now, uh, Ekaterina, please, I think you can start a question session. Uh, thank you very much for the very interesting talk. It looks like it's really very flexible device capable of testing various diagnostics uh, and samples. And now the floor is open for questions. Oh, I already see someone. Okay. So, uh, Jose, please go ahead. Hello. Yes, I, I, this uh, device reminds me very much of the Torpex uh, experiment they had in Lausanne. But I don't uh, see you have a vertical uh, magnetic field, or maybe I missed it. Uh, yeah, yes, you're completely right. We have only toroidal magnetic field, and the device was designed in this way, so to have only the toroidal magnetic field. But uh, from time to time, we think how we can improve this and add some kind of a vertical magnetic field. So um, we have not, so, not, not such a high magnetic field as uh, mm -hmm. 125 milliteslas only uh, on the axis. So right. I think if we use... Uh, new invented technique for example uh, superconducting wires and something like this uh, we can also install an additional ki kind of um, vertical field coil so that's uh, that's that can be an option and would you apply would you plan to increase the toroidal magnetic field i uh, yes we uh, we are we are we think about it currently so we are not so sure whether our coils are flexible for it i know that this week uh, our colleagues in fortune centrum are trying to install uh, some additional elements on the uh, magnetic field coil power supply and then we will test and i think we will be able to go a little bit higher but i cannot i cannot give you any estimation uh, how Good. how high we can go so that's up to up to the investigation Thank you very much. Any other questions to Andre? Um, maybe I will. I will ask myself. Um, I see that uh, it's very flexible device, uh, and I was wondering uh, if only fusion industry is interested uh, in your uh, in these possibilities, or is there some other interest industries that might use um, your device as well? to test their samples for some other purposes. Um, yeah, we, we are open for it, but unfortunately so far we, we didn't, didn't get any proposals, but I think so the device should be better advertised. That was actually the purpose of my talk, but I think if someone comes uh, with the idea to use, for example, some kind of plasma coating or something similar, mm -hmm can discuss it and we can see what what we can do in this case so um the device is uh, is not operated right now it's uh, 24 7 for example so we still have a lot of time to um to add additional experiments on it mm -hmm. yeah that would be very interesting anybody else have questions to andre I do not see any. Uh, well, in this case, I would like to thank you again for joining us today. This, this was a very interesting presentation. Thank you very much for joining us and have a nice rest of your day.